Good morning. Let me get this started. Well, first of all, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, I could not have thought of a better venue to reveal secrets like the one we're about to. And what I'm astounded by, I think, in my almost decade at Apple, um, there were very few things you could keep quiet this long. So um, I was just checking Twitter two minutes ago, and it has not leaked. And that itself makes me uh, like astounded in this day and age how you can involve so many people in the industry to do something that's so major and yet be able to walk up on stage like the old days and say, here it is. So this is the first time we're actually talking about this in public. And I think everything I heard this morning um, from Tim um, following that, it really goes to the heart of the problem that we have, which is the internet is still in its, in its infancy. Uh, we are not a patient um, era. Um, if we contrast this with what happened with television, um, all the things I just heard about, you know, we, we didn't do something right. We're doing everything right. It does, things take time. And a personal anecdote on this is, um, I was on a little project inside Apple in 87, 88 called PenMac, which um, was scrapped for another project called Newton. And as life would end up, the operating system of that then came back to be adopted by Apple for all iPods and then iPhones and of course now where we have with um, iPads today. So sometimes you just have to wait. Um, with television for 27 years, it took a lot of things to come together before it really started to take off. And I'm here first of all to remind us, it's not that we're not doing the right things or, or there's something missing or it doesn't work. It is working, it just takes time. What we want is what you see on, on the screen right now. We want extremely evocative advertising uh, with incredible content that we're used to in print, in television, on digital media. Um, there are many, many ways we are gonna get there. Uh, what we're here today to talk about is, in our own path as a company with Glam, we have really, as if, if you know Glam, you know, first of all, so it's probably the first day I've been on stage since I became CEO not wearing pink. Um, and secondly, the company's founding idea was how do we bring the brands to the internet? It wasn't a content idea. It wasn't an advertising idea. It was really let's talk to the brands and find out. Of course, the brands who are here and everywhere else know that engagement has moved to the internet. What's wrong? How do we fix it? How do we get, you know, like, I start getting thirsty sometimes when I hear a can opening. Um, that obviously didn't come from the can opening, it came from some ad I saw some time ago. How do we get that level to the internet? So for, for those of you who don't know Glam, uh, we started off with a very simple idea. How do we bring brands to the web? Where we were extremely innovative was in our understanding that the web was deeply fragmenting in content. Uh, you know, if you take what Tim said earlier and you actually apply that to the whole internet, not just to AOL, uh, there's over 200 million content sites. There's hundreds of thousands of new videos. Um, we were the first commercial blog network that was created to harness this power of professionals that are using social media as journalists and writers. Um, from there, today, in five years, um, almost to the day, we launched the company in 2005. Glam just entered the top 10 in media um, at number nine, just slightly ahead of CBS today. And at our current growth rate, we should slowly approach the 100 million mark later this year and continue to grow from there. Um, so what is driving this growth? Um, I, I think the factor that people least understand about the internet is it's not just that consumers are getting to fragmented content, it's that Google search is further fragmenting the way we use the web. We go there, we look at things, we go to a website, we come back. This, this is a new way of working. Um, that is what I would say the perfect storm for this fragmentation. While we were on this path, we realized, uh, as many publishers do, that we were running into walls. We were running into the natural issues regarding the seven-year cycle of technology, which, as you remember, in the last downturn, people really stopped investing in deep platforms. And as a very large publisher with very high volume, we were beginning to patch things or get large groups of people to answer the question the brands were asking, which is, 
You know, I don't want click-through data only. What I want is emotional data or metrics. I want to reach the right consumer. I want to see who's clicking versus who's mousing over. All the things we talk about. And after an extensive search, um, we realized that to truly start the next era and usher in this new era of branding, we needed to go back to our roots and become a Silicon Valley company where we're known so much so as a media company in New York. And we did. We, we looked at the entire set of options available and we actually found that there was nothing at scale we could use to really bring in all the things that brands want. So with that in mind, uh, on a personal note, on a very disruptive uh, technology endeavor, um, about 18 months ago, we decided that we will actually build the entire infrastructure ourselves. Um, if you remember, that was at the dead center of the start of the downturn. If you also follow Glam, you know that we did the old way of running a startup where uh, the higher up you were, the more of a pay cut you get. So this is our exec team, the founders, all taking 40, 50 percent, a complete cut in compensation, but quietly funding probably the largest project we've ever done. And today, I'm very, very proud um, to actually not only announce an idea, to announce something that is live, running, and at scale. Um, it is, we believe, the first alternative to the second generation platforms that are out there, uh, including Google DoubleClick. We have created the entire infrastructure from soup to nuts. Um, in the most open way possible with Glam Adapt. So uh, this is our first unveiling right now, right here. Um, what is Glam Adapt? Um, it is a very carefully built technology platform that allows us to actually do what the brands have trusted us to do. Uh, it starts with an actual audience-based ad server um, we have some incredible technology that is uh, software as a service on cloud services built by internal Glam. We, while people were wondering what we were doing, we were actually out there hiring engineers, um, something we're very good at, and built an infrastructure that scales, um, that understands the word audience. Um, we, on top of that, started to build marketplace services for people who need services. And then what I call multi-targeting, which is such a simple concept. Um, of the ways every brand wants to target is uniquely different to them and the product and the audience set. Um, why can we not bring these things together in the industry uh, was something we looked at. Uh, built in inside services, full understanding of standards of engagement, as well as complete publisher and agency workflow. Uh, if you are from this industry, you can understand this is a tremendously large project. There's you know, uh, companies that are over 10, 12 billion dollars who have spent an enormous amount of resource building this. Um, when I spoke to uh, one of the ex-CEOs of one of them, I said, this is what we're doing, any advice? I'll be completely crazy. Uh, he turns to me and said, you know, all this time we knew we have to really rewrite um, the last generation products, and we have not. And we were wondering why no one has done this. We're just surprised it had to be glam. And I think it really came down to necessity that we had to build this. And why now? Um, I think there's enough standards in search, click-through, um, text-based advertising, and performance is really moving to ad exchanges, the hit the monkey ads and even better ads like that. Um, the real issue is very simple. There's a level of packaging in print magazines, which the editors and publishers do, which is very carefully done. There's a level of program packaging that television does extremely well. And that is not easy to do on the internet. And that, that's it. it. It really comes down to that. If you want to really look at the internet as a premium place, how do we do what we were used to doing in the past here? And it's, if you follow how it's done today, it's completely broken as a process. It's got a lot of companies that are trying to help that can't work together or with each other. So what we did is we focus on innovation. Uh, An idea was, number one, completely custom extensible audiences. So if you're used to your own audience definition, or you're using Quantcast or anybody else like that, you can literally use them through our APIs today and say, I want them. 